Hello, from Robert MacDonald here. Please like, share, and subscribe. You can find all my <coughs> links in the description for the various uh, platforms that I'm on, as well as a give, send, and go fund for my wife's cancer treatment. So, today I'm going to be talking about your sexual arousal template. and its interaction with addiction. So first I'll define these words and terms. Addiction is, in regards to what I'm referring to, is to porn, uh, sexual fantasy, masturbation, etc. By sexual arousal template, I refer to that which arouses you sexually, uh, which is a variety of things that get you going. This references the type of uh, woman body type you like, uh, different things that will arouse you sexually through your five senses. And when you are an addict, it can be pretty broad because you're constantly seeking that stimulation. And so it can make it very difficult. But as you work on yourself and as you work on recovery and start building up sobriety and working on maintaining sexual integrity, you're going to notice a change in what arouses you. Initially, of course, in early stages, you're going to just want everything you did before. But as you keep working on it, even if you relapse, even if you break down and fail at times, if you keep working at it, you will build longer and longer stretches of sobriety. And as you lengthen these stretches of sobriety, you will be literally rewiring your brain to be sexually stimulated differently than you were before. And ideally, you're going to be rewiring it to a healthy arousal centered on your wife. So regardless of what turns you on, because if you've been an addict, you're probably gone down some rabbit holes into some kinky <coughs> stuff. And who knows what else, because we're constantly seeking that higher stimulation, that higher dose of brain chemicals. You will find as you progress that this narrows it down, shrinks it down. Shrinking it down doesn't mean some things won't be appealing to you. You know, if you see somebody who is generally attractive or you see a flash of skin or whatever, But it will change as you progress in your recovery work. And you notice that women from the situations that pop out at you will be the ones of particular type. And this will change as you go to be mostly your wife's type of her body build and other traits that you associate with her that she is or does that you find attractive. And as you keep progressing, even when you see these traits in other women, or see those same body builds, it'll be less about, oh, I see that person, I want to save that image and use it for sexually acting out later. It'll be more, well, she's beautiful and she's something appealing, but in a more healthy way that in which you are returning the humanity back to these women as you gain sobriety. You, as you continue to rebuild your sexual integrity to being ever increasingly um, balanced between what is arousing and what is simply attractive or beautiful. So it's something to watch and it's difficult when you're in the middle of it. You will start noticing these changes these are points of progress, points that you should take some hope in and be happy that you are making these pro this progress and reducing the number of opportunities to be tempted or triggered. Instead of essentially half the population in the world, you're cutting back more and more of that of which could trip you up because you're focusing more and more on healthy sexual arousal 
and more and more on your wife and what ought to turn you on and who should be the one that you have for your sexual fulfillment. Now, what locks in your sexual arousal template is that which is your sensory input as you have, have a sexual act, particularly as you orgasm. Whatever you associate with that, it could be sight, touch, smell, taste, and especially what you're thinking and what you're looking at is what locks into your sexual arousal template. Essentially, it is calibrating it. Dr. Doug Weiss used to give a kind of extreme example of this, that this one guy would masturbate while doing his farm chores. So he always had his rubber boots on. And so it got to the point where he could not achieve arouse, uh, erection and orgasm without having his rubber boots on. This is kind of an extreme example, but it does illustrate how binding this template can be and how we have to purposely work on it day to day, moment to moment, decision to decision to change our sexual arousal template. And as we do, as we focus more on what is healthy and on what is our wife and what she is as our spouse and partner, we'll actually have greater sex and it'll be more satisfying. And the worst part of your addiction, you know, there were times where your wife probably didn't look very attractive. She may not have been appealing for whatever reason because she's a real woman. She's not airbrushed and photoshopped like the ones you were looking at before. She's a woman, good, bad, and whatever, all her things, an imperfect human. But as you retrain your brain, you retrain your sexual arousal template to calibrate to this woman that you have chosen to spend your life with to become more and more appealing and more and more sexy. And this should give you hope in this process. It takes time. It takes decisions each moment to say, no, she's mine. I'm not going to look at any other, anything else. And the nice thing is, and a positive that you can take to take hope in is each time you have physical intimacy with her, especially sexual, you are reinforcing and building that image, that healthy attraction that bonds you with her. Because it is this part of you that has been especially warped by porn or whatever other way you were acting out because it's whether you were using cam girls strippers even affairs are not a true picture of reality because you don't have to actually deal with the real world you're not living together you're not doing life together these are all different levels of fantasy, of escape, of fiction. And so the more you are grounded in reality, the more real and genuine the intimacy will be. A couple more things you can do to help yourself with this is when you do make love with your wife, do so with your eyes open. Do so with focusing on her. It, it doesn't matter so much what part of her and you, that it can vary, but definitely take some time to look into her eyes and look at her face and make sure you are grounding your sexual experience together and with her. So it's, it's important to have enough lighting so that you can't let your mind escape and to build up to that moment. Take the time for foreplay 
for other forms of intimacy that aren't explicitly sexual so that you can help yourself get into that mindset in a healthy way. You are not broken or work beyond repair. You can heal. You can come back from wherever you've gone. It just takes effort. Like I talk about here in many other videos. You can heal. You can find your wife to be attractive and to be all you need. And in fact, as you further find this, as you further focus on her, you will have the best sex. Carry on.